Hare Krishna, thank you very much. I am so very happy to uh, be amongst all of you once again for this uh, monthly festival that we have. Uh, the uh, Harinam Sankirtan festival. Uh, sometimes, uh, I think it is called as a six hour festival, but now uh, uh, since the time of the pandemic, it has gone online and it has uh, become a 12 hour festival. So Acharya Niti Prabhu, uh, he uh, occasionally um, tells me uh, to uh, be present on these particular occasions and uh, speak on the Chaitanya Charitamrit. Uh, so uh, today we are going to speak on the Chaitanya Charitamrit, which has been authored by the great personality, um, Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami Maharaj. And uh, we are reading from uh, the uh, English translation of this Bengali epic. Uh, the English translation uh, from the Bengali uh, uh, and uh, along with uh, his, uh, along with the purports, have been given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Daita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Daita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Jai Jai Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Daita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda So we are reading, reading from the Adi Leela uh, Chapter 1 Chapter is entitled The Spiritual Masters Text number 56 56 onwards Let us see in the short time that we have We will try and uh, speak a little on each of these texts. Text number 56 uh, is a verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Etava deva jignasam tattva jignasunatmanaha anvaya vyatire kabhyam yatsyat sarvatra sarvada Translation a person interested in the transcendental knowledge must therefore always directly or indirectly, directly and indirectly inquire about it to know the all-pervading truth. Shri Prabhupada has given a long purport to this and I would encourage all of you to go through the purport um, as we speak or you could do that later on too. So, Om Agyanati Mirandhas Gyananjana Shalakya Chakshur Anmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha So, um, we are trying to understand uh, from the Chaitanya, Chaitanya Charitamrita the nature of uh, the relationship that a person who is inquisitive about Krishna consciousness, about God consciousness and the spiritual master who enlightens uh, the sincere inquirer. So that is the context. Kaviraj Goswami himself has accepted the six Goswamis as his uh, Shiksha Guru or instructing spiritual masters. And uh, from there onwards, he is uh, explaining the uh, benefit and the great fortune that one has 
uh, when one who is in the human, human form um, has uh, on receiving the association of such a great personality who could be the instructing spiritual master or Siksha Guru. Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami is putting a lot of effort to encourage all of us to time and again meditate on this aspect of spiritual practice which is called as Tattva Jignyasa or Tattva Jignyasa. Tattva means inquiry into the absolute truth. Sorry, Tattva means the absolute truth. And Jignyasa means inquiry into the subject matter of the absolute truth. So Jignyasa means inquiry, Tattva means the absolute truth. So in the human form of life, one must be very, very enthusiastic uh, to always make inquiries into the Absolute Truth. In fact, uh, when we stop making inquiries into the Absolute Truth, into the nature of the Absolute Truth, into the uh, various aspects of the Absolute Truth, then the only option that we have is to try and seek happiness through the worthless process of sense gratification, through the tiring process of sense gratification. Hence a Govida or an intelligent person uh, is always very enthusiastic. And uh, is always very enthusiastic to uh, inquire into the various aspects of the Absolute Truth. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna makes it aptly clear that this is the one and only quality of great souls. Machitta madgata prana bodhayanta parasparam kathayantas chamam nityam tushyanti charamanti cha. Machitta madgata prana. For those personalities that have made the Supreme Lord as their very life their very soul whose existence abides in the Supreme Personality of, of Godhead who are completely immersed in remembering the Supreme Personality of Godhead. These great personalities, they always Bodhayanta Parasparam, they always find ways and means to encourage one another to help each other talk, speak, hear, remember the various existences of the Absolute Truth. Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead who exists as the Lord of Vrindavan, who exists as the Lord of the heart of the living entity, who exists as the person who has so many uh, wonderful 
relationships with his devotees in so many ways the lord exists these are the various aspects of his existence so the great uh, personalities they delve they dive deep into uh, these topics about krishna just a couple of months ago i was uh, speaking on uh, at another forum and i was remembering the past time of uh, lord chaitanya visiting his great devotee advait acharya at his home and advait acharya he requests the lord to show him the universal form and then kaviraj goswami explains that uh, Advait Acharya was so affected, so happy, or so um, blessed uh, to see the universal form that he started dancing and chanting in Kirtan, and then the universal form also started dancing with Advait Acharya. so these are the various topics that we discuss in krishna consciousness whether it is about the lord revealing his universal form or the lord revealing his four-handed form or the lord lord revealing his shad bhuja roop the six-handed form the lord traveling from dwarka to mithila or lord krishna as the lord of vaikuntha lord krishna as the lord of go go loka vrindavan there are so many topics that great personalities have to discuss about in fact uh, the scriptures state that the most powerful expansion one of the most powerful expansions of krishna as ananta shesha it is like the uh, the um, lower limit of the lord's expansion if there can be an integral function applied to the lord's expansion then shesha means the end the last so lower limit point a on y is equal to fx integral fx graph point a would be ananta shesh powerful and his business he has thousands of hoods or thousands of heads he is in the form of a serpent a serpent has a hood and ananta shesh has thousands of hoods hence one of the uh, explanations of the uh, name ananta shesh means the thousand headed although it is called as the thousand headed what it basically means is unlimitedly one who has unlimited heads or unlimited hoods with each one of these heads or hoods the lord ananta is glorifying lord chaitanya or is glorifying lord krishna and he he has been doing it since the beginning of time since the beginning of creation and he hasn't been able to describe all the activities that the lord performs in a single moment and the lord has been performing activities since ever so there is so much to discuss what we read in the scriptures according to our own traditions are called as revealed knowledge or they are called as revealed scriptures revealed scriptures are just a drop of the ocean of all that can be written about lord krishna just a drop of the ocean of krish of the topics you know, or the subject matters related to krishna so anyways so this is the uh, the the focus of great personalities now um 
the only way one can use these faculties and this, these abilities these faculties that one has uh, to interact in this material world such as the ability to speak the ability to hear the ability to remember the ability to see in other words these facilities that we have as the senses can only be uh, used uh, for logical purposes for a, for logical activities is when we receive training when we re when we receive training uh, in uh, utility of the senses including the mind so uh, the the function of uh, uh, training us is performed by uh, those who are experts in any subject matter so these experts are called as our teachers in the English language they are called as Sikshak in the Sanskrit language when these teachers uh, are able to explain the the ex expansion um, the expanse when they are able to explain uh, coherently when these uh, such teachers are able to explain coherently the subject matter of Krishna consciousness because the topic of Krishna consciousness is uh, has such gravity in it we call them as Guru Srila Prabhupada was once asked uh, by a devotee or by another person that who is a guru and Prabhupada says or what is a guru and Prabhupada says guru means heavy heavy with knowledge guru means grave the word guru just has uh, uh, another word that comes from this verbal uh, root uh, is uh, Gurutva Krishna or uh, the uh, the um, um, the energy of the earth um, Gurutva Krishna Shakti the earth's pull the gravitational force so gravity grave the gravitational pull uh, so the word Guru has been very uh, very uh, commonly used or uh, very very uh, yeah that is the word. commonly used uh, in many instances um, according to Sanskrit grammar and the Sanskrit or the Sanskrit uh, dictionary the word Guru implies gravity grave heavy with the knowledge or uh, one who is always submerged submerged uh, sorry immersed uh, in uh, serving Krishna through hearing chanting remembering etc so uh, since we need training uh, in in order to use our senses if we have a, a great person uh, who is a guru uh, training us in the proper use of the senses or um, helping us facilitating us uh, when we use our senses for various activities uh, the advice or the directions given by uh, this guru become our instructions and therefore uh, such a guru is referred to as a siksha guru or instructing spiritual master in fact just as we have so many teachers or sikshaks uh, who explain the uh, various aspects of material science similarly we have unlimited number of gurus uh, who explain to us the science of 
God consciousness or Krishna consciousness. So it is not uncommon uh, to find someone who has received instructions from multiple people. It is not uncommon to have more than one spiritual master. Um, in fact, it is quite common and it is quite healthy too. Over time, one of these uh, instructing spiritual masters uh, helps us uh, to be connected to a disciplic succession through the process of initiation and that uh, spiritual master is called as the uh, Siksha Guru who is now the Diksha Guru. So that uh, uh, Guru, that spiritual master who initiates us into the disciplic succession and there are, there are various protocols. So that becomes uh, that uh, spiritual master uh, who is our Siksha Guru and also our Diksha Guru now or the initiating spiritual master. Now, when we have instructions given to us, uh, the idea of instructions is so that it gives you uh, direction. When we speak of direction according to material science, wherever there is direction, wherever uh, there is this arrow pointing, uh, what it basically means is that there has to be some momentum. What it basically means is that there has to be the application of force which causes a change in energy. Uh, it means that now it is there has to be some kinesis, there has to be some movement, there has to be some activity. Instructions which do not bring about activity do not exist. So instructions are directly proportional to activity. If there is zero activity, that means zero instructions. So either we have not received instructions or we are not paying attention to the instructions. Uh, which is a dangerous proposal, which is not a very healthy proposal or healthy situation. So instructions are directly proportional to activities. So more, the more we pay attention to the instructions, the more we'll be, we will be active in life. The more there will be momentum uh, towards uh, devotional service, the more uh, there will be an acceleration in our lives while we are performing a devotional service, there will, there will be more velocity. I'm just trying to explain it in terms of math and physics. Um, so uh, what it means is that one cannot afford to be lazy. Laziness is when activity tends towards zero. So anything tending towards zero results, the resultant product would be a big zero. So when action or karma or uh, uh, the, the functioning of the senses is tending towards zero, uh, that uh, state of uh, functioning, that state function is called as laziness. So laziness uh, is not uh, a quality and that can glorify any disciple, that can glorify any student. In fact, uh, laziness uh, is an obstacle. Hence, uh, this verse uh, where it speaks about uh, Vatireka Bhya. Vatireka Bhya means Vati. Vatirik, uh, rek, uh, vatirik, and abhyam. Vatirik means uh, vatirik abhyam indirectly. And anvaya means directly. So anvaya vatirik abhyam. So vatirik abhyam means indirect and anvaya means uh, directly. Uh, one has to Jignasyam. Jignasyam means inquire, which means one has to inquire through uh, remembrance, one has to inquire through 
hearing, one has to perform inquiry through speaking, uh, any of the nine limbs of uh, devotional service, jignyasana. Jigyas, so one has to uh, uh, inquire into transcendental knowledge. In the Mahabharat, uh, in order to uh, encourage Yudhishthir, Bhishma tells him a story. This is a story about a camel that had been a Brahmana in a previous life. Uh, camels generally, uh, although they are very large animals, you don't find them to be very active. They prefer, because they live in deserts, especially during the, during the daytime, uh, they prefer, or uh, in places that are very dry, they live in such places, they prefer to be in the shade, uh, to conserve their energy, to conserve uh, moisture or um, to maintain the hydration of their uh, system, their body. Uh, so a camel would generally be seen sitting and just kind of munching away. Uh, typically, if one is lazy and uh, one is not um, uh, doing much, then uh, uh, in uh, in India, in many uh, societies in India, um, there's an old proverb, proverb that one should not be a camel, which basically means one should be active. Uh, so uh, the reason the uh, the Brahman, uh, Brahman basically at that point of time would mean somebody who was very very interested in spirit and. Uh, uh, practicing the instructions from the scriptures. So very healthy life style uh, has become a camel. So there was there was some laxity, there was some laziness there. So uh, becomes a camel. By dint of uh, the uh, austere practices of the previous previous life, uh, the camel was an intelligent camel. Uh, the camel could remember uh, that uh, life is not meant for sense gratification but for uh, performing austerities uh, to achieve a higher goal. So the camel did a lot of austerities. And uh, by dint of previous uh, fruitive results, previous karma and present uh, austerities, Brahmaji became pleased with the camel. So Brahmaji uh, gave his darshan. Lord Brahma gives his darshan to the camel. Uh, what is your desire? Says Lord Brahma. And the camel says, it's, it is so difficult for me to find food. Uh, I need, uh, in my search for food, I have to travel. So I would be uh, very, very happy if you can give me a very long neck, at least a hundred yojana long. <laughs> um, obviously, this is an instructive story or a moral story. So... This is how moral stories are. Bhishma is trying to explain to you this term, Maharaj. So, uh, because of one's previous uh, activities, now is a camel, has the facility of uh, having some kind of intelligence which makes him do austerities. At the same time, being in the body of a camel now influences this living entity the Brahmana reborn to cash in the, 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 coupons, the coupons that he had received for his austerities to cash in these coupons for sense gratification. So the camel asked Brahmaji, if you can give me a long neck I mean, I can, I can elongate the neck 
uh, or reduce its length at my will uh, and um, if I could uh, elongate it to a hundred yojanas, one yojana is like a hundred yojanas is what Hanumanji jumped across. So uh, while jumping from the southern tip uh, across the ocean to Sri Lanka, a hundred yojana. One, one yojana is about eight miles. So 800 miles. Wow. One yojan is four crosas, one crosa is like two miles, so eight miles. Brahmaji says the thus to. So now he can uh, now extend his neck as and when needed without moving. So there was there are so many other things I could that he could have asked for, but his present body does not allow him to do that. His focus is on how I can be comfortable. Anyways, so he's extended his neck, uh, searching for food in various places, and he uh, finds food in a distant forest. Now his body is in a dry place. His neck is extended to a few Uh, like 50, 60, no, like a few hundred miles where there is a storm. So there is, there is a forest there. He has found fresh food, fresh leaves or whatever there. There is a, there is a rainstorm and the rains are, uh, they are hurting uh, him. So he doesn't want to leave that place because he hasn't had his fill. The camel hasn't had his fill. So the camel seeks shelter, trying to save its face and its eyes. The camel hides within a cave. So try and imagine this. The body is hundreds of miles away. There's an elongated neck and the face is hidden inside a cave. A male and female jackal hmm. also seeks shelter in that cave. They are hungry. Jackals are carnivores. So they see this really juicy flesh in front of them which happens to be the neck of the camel. To jump up, catch hold of the neck and start feeding on it. The camel feels the pain and now in order to in order to save its life, the camel retracts its neck. Unfortunately for the camel, the jackals are holding on tightly and not letting go of the neck. The jackals eat through the neck and the camel loses its life. Uh, this story was uh, explained um, by Bhishma Dev to Yudhisthira Maharaj so that he could achieve the purpose of his uh, being a human being, being a human uh, whose occupational duty was of a king. He wanted to encourage Yudhishthir Maharaj uh, to perform his kingly duties uh, in full Krishna consciousness. So one uh, has to give up laziness and in order to give up laziness one has to find ways, anvaya, direct ways or vetireka bhyam, indirect ways to connect uh, or to uh, immerse oneself, uh, oneself in uh, Krishna's service. Such a student is called as a serious student by Srila Prabhupada in the purport. 
Shri Prabhupada says that typically uh, any human being who has not received training would be a student, but a student with unregulated habits. So when the student receives instructions from the Guru, Siksha is instructions. Guru is now the Siksha Guru. So these instructions help the student train one's senses such that one has regulated habits now. Now when one has uh, regulated habits, then these regulated habits help us use our time diligently. When we uh, are careful of using our time diligently, we become aware of what is needed and what is not needed. So that which is needed, we accept and that which is unnecessary, we reject. And in this way, we become or we, uh, we start exhibiting our qualities of being a good student uh, who is experiencing Sharanagati, two limbs of Sharanagati. So this is how a serious student learns uh, from the Siksha Guru and hence uh, one must uh, seek the association of such spiritual masters and one must uh, feel grateful having received instructions from them. And it is going to be a journey Remember, directly or indirectly, we have to find means to be able to learn the science of Krishna consciousness. And when we say learn, it is not just memorization, it is not just theoretical knowledge. Learning means practical understanding too. So we learn how to play the Mridanga, we learn how to worship the deity, we learn how to distribute books, we learn how to cook uh, bhoga offerings for the Lord, we learn how to get up early in the morning, we learn how to sleep early at night, we learn how to understand the scriptures and when we do all of this uh, with remembering Krishna with feeling grateful to Krishna, that learning now becomes realization. Generally, people speak of realization as the understanding received at the end of a particular action. And uh, the scriptural understanding of learning is, uh, realized knowledge is learning or realized knowledge is that we have once again learned the act, the art. Mm -hmm.